evening, tired, listless, depressed after England's defeat? Well, at Old Trafford today, nearly 45,000 snapped out of their gloom. They were in tremendous voice for Manchester United against Spurs. Cantona wants it over this side. And he might just get it. Oh, a good strike. Campbell. Too long, and he follows it out. Up the line, excellent clearance by Pallister from the land. And at St. James's Park 2, the domestic game proved to be a suitable antidote for international blues. Nearly 34,000 present for Newcastle against QPR. Cole. Oh, Bracewell in a good position if Beardsley can find him, and he did. And here's Beardsley! And the header on. And it's in by Ferdinand! Oh, what a save by Michael Hooper! Well, those are the two main games tonight. There's a special look at Norwich, who play Bayern Munich on Tuesday, plus the goals from all the other top matches. Trevor and Allen on today's games, and why neither will be applying for the England job, thus confirming their sanity. Let's start then with the champions. Manchester United, the majority of their squad back from international duty. The visitors, Tottenham Hotspur, lying fifth in the table. The commentator at Old Trafford, Barry Davis. It's a bright, crisp afternoon to clear the collective head for Rotterdam. And in prospect, a fixture of fine tradition to lift the spirits. We shouldn't though run away with the fact that it's been a depressing week for everyone. Two in the Spurs lineup with reason indeed to celebrate. This man, Eric Torsvet, although he didn't play on Wednesday, will be going with Norway to the World Cup finals. Their first appearance there since 1938. And for Nick Bambi, after two operations to cure shin splints, he's back in contention and indeed makes his debut in the Premiership. Among the international injured, Paul Ince has not recovered from ankle problems, so he's replaced in the United lineup by Brian Robson, but Dennis Irwin was past fit. And among the substitutes, another of the Ferguson Babes, 19-year-old Nicky Butt, who played in every match but the final in the England under-18 side in the summer. Spurs are without the injured Darren Anderton, and the suspended Colin Calderwood, David Howells takes the centre-half position. The referee from Tony Pandy is Keith Burge. Who, like United will be involved in European action next week. He referees Ajax of Amsterdam against uh, Gordon Mill side, Besiktas of uh, Turkey. It's David Kerslick. Spurs playing left to right. Kaski sharing him and an offside flag against Nicky Bambi. Sharp. well for him two excellent passes Robson unable to provide the finish Cantona's pass was superb that found Giggs and Giggs found Robson well may well have just used the uh, wrist there to help the control Cantona and Howells strength of the challenge of the Frenchman was enough to put off Howells and Hughes gets away with the bounce here. That's a good tackle by Howells. Hughes again. Unlucky. Key wanted the return ball, didn't get it. But you can't blame Hughes for having a crack there. Yeah. We're appealing for offside, but it was not.
Bambi. Just a little unfortunate. Sometimes difficult for a big defender when he's got a little chap in front of him. Shilling him his far post. He's well in the middle, map it up in the six yard area. Pretty crowded at the back, he's sharing him! Got away at the back, he's unmarked when he gets the header. Sheringham is the player down. Came rather sharply back. One by Keane, break left side. Nicely placed the ball. Two to his right. Curse like who blocked. Rode the challenge beautifully. It was a good cross, it should be said. Sedgley who put it out. But the cross was well struck to the back of the box. Had an attacker been coming in on that, the point might have been more appreciated. And Teddy Sheringham still feeling the knock of a moment ago, I think. Sheringham has to come off. It's a sad loss for Tottenham. And a rare opportunity for Paul Moran. His fourth appearance as substitute, but he doesn't usually get on this early. A player who's had more than his fair share of injuries himself. Leading scorer gone. And another corner for Manchester United. Sharp, a little obvious, Erwin does well to cover. And through the under-21 matches, 13 players went to seven different nations during the week from Manchester United. Cantona was one of them, of course. A delightful ball in that Keane couldn't turn in. So nonchalant it seemed. Don't know whether there was a brush of the head that took it away from Keane. It's not really too late for the International Olympic Committee, proving the sun shines brightly in Manchester. Bambi. Oh, that's interesting, and this is Sedgley. Good save. It's the first save of the match. And he did well to parry. Chance for Spurs here. This is Moran. Bombay far side, Dizel. This is Bombay. Just got a flick from Parker. Well, that's the last action of the first period. Ends at nil-nil. Mark Hughes coming nearest to scoring for Manchester United with the uh, shot across the face. But the only save was made by Alec Ferguson's goalkeeper, Peter Schmeichel. Denying this man, Steve Sedgley. Brian Robson. Manchester United now attacking the end. We're in this fixture in January. They had a bit of a purple spell. Here's Cantona.
one of the scorers in the match last season. Teddy Sheringham in need of the crutches. Let's hope it's not a long-term injury. Pass is not a good one. Marco's life made easy. Campbell. Too long, and he follows it out. Off the line, excellent clearance by Pannister from Moran. Keane. With Giggs making the run up ahead. Cantona coming in from the left. And Torswit has to recover as well. More action for the goalkeepers than in the first half. And Gary Pannister made the clearance after Schmeichel and Stretch couldn't take, but then went out to attack the ball and inhibit Bambi. Stretch the goalkeeper couldn't quite make it, but he goes in chase of the ball. Bambi does well, Panasa does better than an Imaran. Sedgley, Moran. Oh, not a bad try because uh, initially, certainly, the uh, Danish number one was looking for the cross and had to cover across Samuel was, was surprised that Howes didn't come for that Kentonov very quick to take advantage nice little touch and here's Hughes good save, follow up Robson second good save, follow up Sharp Didn't keep it under control, but Eric Torsvet really did well then for his side. And at some cost to himself. Cantona's flick. It ran a bit for Giggs, who set up Hughes, the goalkeeper to him. Made the parry, got to it just as Robson did. And then Sharp with a side foot got underneath the ball. Sharp. Bit of tugging going on. Destruction given. Referee just goes to have a word with the line. It's a question of where the uh, tug was, if it was a clear tug. That's a name taken. That's a casket. No arm up, so it's been given for the push. Irving with the dummy. Free header for Pallister, which he doesn't take advantage of. Best chance of the match. Right in on goal. Put the ball right over the top. That ways. Keane, Cantona to his left. Ball caused the Frenchman to hesitate a little bit.
Just inside the post from Roy Keane and Manchester United have the lead almost at the end of the 65th minute. Only once this season of Manchester United uh, failed to score. That was at Chelsea. I think Alec Ferguson might have begun to wonder whether there would be uh, another occasion, but not so. Here's Giggs! Away from Sedgley. A play by Robson. Somewhat off his nose. Mistake by Howells, and this is sharp. And that's two. Delight for Manchester United and their following. But you have to have some sympathy for the two Spurs central defenders. Each has made an error and both have been punished. And Sharp, who missed an opportunity not that long ago, took full advantage here of the mistake by Howells. <laughs> Seemed to have the cross from uh, Cantona under control, lost it. And Sharp made him pay. United to make a substitution. Spurs have already just made a second. Brian Robson giving way to Brian McClare. And Spurs have already brought on Justin Edinburgh in place of uh, the man who previously came on as a substitute, Paul Moran. Samways. Bazell. Kerslake. Four Spurs players around the edge of the 18-yard area. Now five. It's other than the two who are into passing. And in comes Edinburgh, who gets in unmarked. And Kasky scores. Bad marking by Manchester United. Got totally lost on the right. And Spurs are back with hope. He called for the ball for quite a long time, Edinburgh. Kasky gets his second senior goal of the season. Drawing Ryan Giggs. And replacing him with young Nicky Butt. Made one appearance last season. Very relaxed. It's an impression that he's given for a season and a half. Cantona. McClare back again to Cantona. He's got the edge on Mavrid here. The ball will come down for him, but it won't. Did rather snatch at it. That's a little unlike the Frenchman. He had a little bit more time then than he took. And he will know that better than anyone. Perhaps he thought that Mavrid was a bit closer than he was. Wouldn't come down there. Pull it across. Hughes. Cantona wants it over this side. And he might just get it. Oh, what a good strike. Total confidence as the ball came across Eric Cantona that he was going to hit it on the volley. Oh, mistake by Schmeichel, but it doesn't matter. Five straight wins for Manchester United. Roy Keane scoring their first. Lee Sharp, who had been guilty of a miss, scoring their second. 
Darren Kasky making it very interesting at the end in what was always a match which commanded attention without actually living, lifting one too often out of one seat. But as Alec Ferguson showed their delight and another win, the champion's defense of their title still goes on with great style. Uh, it was interesting looking at Alec Ferguson at the end of the match. It was just that little reaction that he gave another three points. Yeah, I think he's always worried when we come back after international games. Uh, I think it was the last international match we went to Chelsea and we lost 1-0. I think the lads were you know, fairly disappointed. Uh, I think we were quite tired. I think he was afraid of that as well today. I think we don't, you know, just forgot about the, the disappointing results of midweek and got the three points and everyone's happy. Obviously losing Teddy Sheringham was a major handicap. Yeah, it's been a, bit, it's a big blow to us in the first half because uh, you know, Teddy scored a lot of goals this season for us and uh, he leads the front line very well for us. So yes, that, that was a disappointment for us, but we worked hard after that. And I thought throughout the game, and especially when we came back after going 2-0 down, came back to 2-1, well, we had a couple of half chances after that, but you know, in the end, uh, just weren't quite good enough to, to pull it back today. Well, I think it was an important one for us today because we've had a lot of disappointments for the players this week. I mean, Eric Cantor has five minutes to go with a winning 2-1, five minutes away from America. France, yeah. Five minutes away, they're still battling to be there. I wonder when he did a draw. And they're still battling to get there. And England really only needed to draw. So it was a terrible disappointment for a few of our players. So today was a proving ground for me. That um, all the talk about maybe, particularly after the Chelsea game where we did show tiredness, today was a proving ground in the sense that um, we had to dispel all that. And I felt that the real did look strong today. Roy Keane made a pretty useful adjustment back to league football today. Yeah, he played well today. I don't think. We've seen the best of Roy Keane yet. When he signed from Nottingham Forest, you would have thought the ploy would have been up to Hughes, back to Cantona, Keane in his way, ball played through, and he'll score goals. But United have got so many options, he's found it difficult to find his way into the system. But today he played well, and in the th opposition third of the pitch, he's very, very good. Mm -hmm. And he showed he can pass and play as well. When he picks it up here, when it's played to him, he gets in a good angle to receive it. He's very aware of what's round about him. Takes it to the side. Good ball played into Cantona. But he's great at getting forward. We've got him circled here. Now, when it's played forward, he's on his way. It gets played forward to Cantona on the left hand side. He comes inside. It's a magnificent ball in. Now, who's in there? Roy Keane at the back post, and I thought he was desperate and lucky if he hits that in the back of the net. But he's sure he's got strength and pace as well here. He gets away from Samways, pulls him off, and that's great ball across the face of the goal, just waiting to be hit in the back of the net. And this is a goal, and again, watch him, he's on the edge of the box, forward position. He's in a great position to hit it, good shot in the corner of the net. That's five goals he scored. He said at the start of the season he'd be happy with ten, mm. so he's halfway there. His great asset seems to be stamina, an engine, he's got as great, they say he's nowadays. gets forward well. Yeah. Now, United are going to take some beating this season. How do you beat United? They used to say uh, when you went to Anfield, you attacked on the flanks and you could I beat them. I thought you might have said you attack <laughs> them through the middle, but <coughs> <laughs> Anfield. No, no, no. no, no. Take on the flanks and you win, but they, of course it didn't often work. But how do you beat United? How do you go to Old Trafford? Trev, you have a go. How do you go to Old <laughs> Trafford? <laughs> <laughs> With difficulty, I think. Uh, I mean, they are difficult to break down because you look at the side and say, well, where are their weaknesses? Is it, I mean, a little bit of pace perhaps at times. I mean, I thought Andy Cole gave him problems uh, earlier in the season for Newcastle and, and perhaps somebody running from deep, Sergio Lee got in once, you know, just the timing of the runs because they do push up, a bit like Liverpool do, a little bit square at times and if you can just time the run at the, uh, you know, the perfect time, but of course Ray Clemens used to come out, Schmeichel comes out, they, they, they fill that gap and, and they've got so many options then in attack to pull a goal back. With difficulty is your With answer. Difficulty. I think you've got to defend deep, hit them in the break, as Trevor says, a bit of genuine pace up front. And if you make chances, you've got to take them, because if you make one, they'll make three. 